Hi there, this is Unmesh from Pixim Perfect, and today I'm going to share with you how to create brilliant sun rays for portraits in Photoshop. So, without any further ado, let's get started. Back in the magical world of Photoshop, and if you want to go ahead and download this one and follow along, you already know what to do. Check the links in the description. The very first thing that we need to do is to tell Photoshop where the sun rays are. And the easiest way to do that is to just choose the lasso tool and just start drawing the sun rays. Now, if you want to be more precise, you can always use the pen tool and then start from right here. Now, as you draw the sun rays, just keep in mind that you need to be careful about the ups and the downs and the peaks and the valleys and accordingly, draw those curves. Now, I have already done it to save time. So I'm just going to simply load that. So I'm going to go to select and then load selection. I already have sun rays selection right there. So I made the selection and then I feathered it a little bit. Now, keep in mind, the selection is a little reversed. So this might confuse you. So your selection might look something like this. Now, once you have the selection, you can click on the adjustment icon and then choose curves. Now, before just brightening the sun rays area, we need to darken the other areas that the sun is not touching, where the sun rays are not touching. So now, if you just try to darken it, the opposite will happen. We want just the opposite of this. So select the mask and then press Control or Command I. All right. Now, we don't want to just darken it and add a lot of contrast. We want to darken the highlights as well. So first of all, take the rightmost point, drag it down. So this seems to be about right. And have a look how much more realistic this looks at the moment, right? So at this point, it about looks right. And maybe if you want to create a curve, you can do that too, depending upon what kind of contrast you're looking for. This looks right to me. Let's move forward. Now, as we know, my friends, sun rays are warm. And where the sun rays are not falling, those areas are cooler. So we need to add a little bit blue to the other areas. So create a curves adjustment layer again, and we want to limit it just to those areas. So hold the Alt key, the Option key, and click on the line between these two to create a clipping mask. The other way to do that is simply click on this button right over there. All right. It also creates a clipping mask. Now, whatever you do will be limited to just that area. Now we want to make it cooler. So what do we do? We go to the blue channel and just increase the blue just a little bit, just a touch right there. Now, I feel that I've made it a little too dark. Maybe let's go back here. Maybe let's make it a little brighter. I feel it should be the case. And there you go. It looks a little better. Now, as the sun ray hits, it just goes into the skin and make the blood glow from the inside. Don't believe me? Well, take a look at this photo. Look at this photo of an actual sun ray falling on the face. See what's happening around the edges. Look, it's going inside and making the blood glow from inside. And therefore, look at the edge. It's all red. That's what we have to replicate right here. Click on the adjustment layer icon. And this time, let's create a color balance adjustment layer. Now we want to increase the reds in the midtones. So inside of the midtones, just increase the reds. A value of 55 would work for this case. Now we only want to apply to the edge. First of all, let's limit it only to the outside areas, outside areas of the sun ray. So hold the Alt key or the Option key and click on the line between these two to create a clipping mask. Now we want it only on the edge. So what do we do? We simply press Ctrl or Command I to invert the mask. Now, what if we had the selection of the edges? Well, to get it, hold the Ctrl or Command and click on the mask of the first curves. Now, this is a selection of the opposite areas. We want to invert the selection. So press Ctrl Shift I or Command Shift I. The selection is still on the inside, a little smaller. We need to expand it a little bit. So how do we expand the selection? Well, go to Select modify and then expand. Let's expand it by 20 pixels. If you don't think it's enough, you can expand or contract it later as well. Now simply take the brush white as the foreground color, just paint on the edge. That's all you got to do. Just make sure opacity and flow are at 100 and just paint just like this. Make sure you only paint over the skin, nowhere else, not on the lips, not on the cap. Just paint right here. And there you have it. If the marching ants are disturbing you, you can always press Ctrl or Command H to hide it momentarily so that you can paint freely and see how the edges are actually looking to you. Now, once it's okay, once everything is looking fine to you, you can always press Ctrl or Command D to deselect. Now, if you want something extra, you can just make the brush a little larger and maybe add a little more shade of red in some places, right? Like this, maybe a little more right here, a little more right here. All right, this area looks too much red, so you can just take that away by painting black right over there. And there you go. This area looks just too much, so I'm going to take that away from that area, from this area as well. That's up to you as to how you want to go about it. Now, here comes an essential part where there will be light, there will definitely be shadow. Now, sunlight right here is hard. 
So we need to create some hard shadows right over here. So see, the light is falling on the finger, right? So we need to have a little bit shadow right there. So let's just go down to this mask right there. And you can do it freehand. Take the brush, make it a little bit smaller and just start painting with black. Just continue to create the shadow right here. No big deal. See that? See the shadow of that finger falling in right there? Similarly, you can do this right over here. You don't have to be super careful. See how much more natural it looks at the moment. Now you can take the time for detailing and draw shadows everywhere else. Maybe right next to the nose, maybe a little bit around the eyes. Even the sky is not the limit, my friend. The cosmos might be the limit because the more time you give to it, the more realistic the effect will be. Now it is time for us to focus on the sunlight areas and maybe add some brightness and contrast. First of all, let's add some contrast by creating another curves adjustment layer. You know, it's our favorite. First of all, we need to brighten these areas. So just take the hand right over there. Just click and drag it up. That's all you got to do. Now we need to darken these areas. Just click and drag it down. There you go. Now you have some contrast. Now we only want to apply it in the sunlight area. So how do we limit that again? With the help of masks. So we copy this mask right over there by holding the Alt key or the Option key and drag it and drop it right over there. Hit yes. Now we want just the opposite of it. So select the mask, press Ctrl or Command I. So it only affects the sunlight areas. Now have a look. Look at how awesome these red edges look. Now the sunlight areas still need a little bit boost. So let's create one more curves adjustment layer. And this time, let's just take it up. Let's go bonkers right there. Now this is amazing, but we are losing details and not every area would be so bright, right? So again, we want to limit it just to this mask right there. So hold the Alt key, the Option key and click on the line between these two. See, already it's looking so realistic, but we don't want so much brightness all over the place. So for this mask, take a gradient from white to black and just simply draw a gradient. There we go. Now that looks much more better. Now you can select the mask, press Ctrl or Command T and adjust the mask. How much and where you want the brightness, you can move it here and there, see what works for you. So this might work for me. Hit enter or return. This looks all right. Now there's one more major problem with this. Can you guess what it is? Have a look at the eyes. When there's sun shining on the eyes, it definitely is not reflecting the soft box. <laughs> or is it? So we need to replace the eyes absolutely. Because when there's sun in the eyes, it looks a hell lot different. The iris lights up differently. So here I have this picture. Let me just drag it and drop it into Photoshop. You're going to use this as a sample. Look at this one. Focus on the eyes right over here. It's a different ball game. So we need to copy this iris and just paste it right there. So let's use the lasso tool, make a selection of that area, press Ctrl or Command C, come back here, press Ctrl or Command V. And now we need to match it with the existing eyes. So press Ctrl or Command T and now just rotate it. First of all, let's decrease the opacity to about 40% to match it properly. Now. If you want, you can convert this into a smart object to make it non-destructive so that when you make it smaller or bigger, you don't lose details. But really, you don't have to do that because there are lots of changes which we want to make right here. Let's take the anchor point right here so that it becomes easier to resize. And there you go. That will work probably, hopefully. Hit enter or return once you're satisfied. Increase the opacity back at 100. Create a mask. Take the brush. With black as the foreground color, take a soft round brush and erase the extras. Now, sometimes you might need to warp it. So first of all, let's unlink the mask. Select the layer, press Ctrl or Command T, right click on it and then choose Warp. Just to adjust things here and there a little bit, you can draw a grid, a 4x4 or 5x5. So I'm just going to go 3x3, hit OK and then make some adjustments here. Once you're happy with this, hit Enter or Return. Now, I want to move this a little bit to the right. So first of all, let's unlink the mask. Select this layer, press Ctrl or Command T. Let's just move it right there and it looks all right. Now there's still a little bit shine there at the bottom. We need to fix that. Create a brand new layer at the top. Select the regular healing brush tool, not the spot, the regular healing brush tool. Make sure sample is current and below. Just take a sample from right here and probably start painting. Take a sample from right here and cover it up properly. No big deal. Once you're done, look how much more realistic it looks than before. So this is the before, absolutely not matching at all with the sun rays. This is the after. Now it is looking like something. Now you can do the same thing for the left eye, but I don't think we have to do much. Let me quickly do that for you the same way we did the right eye. So here is what I've done. It's just a simple, small area for the left eye. 
So there you have it. You can actually stop right here. But there are some finishing touches that you can always apply. Now, if you look at the original photo of the sun ray, you would notice that as it falls, it reflects here just a little bit and therefore you have some shine on the nose, some brightness on the hair a little bit. So we can definitely add that to make our image more interesting. So let's create one more curves adjustment layer at the top. Just take it all the way up like this. Now we want some reds in it. So let's go to the red channel and let's increase the reds just a little bit. Let's go to the blue channel, decrease the blue a little bit so that it becomes a little yellowish. Keep in mind, blue is the opposite of yellow. Let's go to the green channel and decrease the greens to make it a little more magenta. Now, select a mask, press Ctrl or Command I, take the brush with white as the foreground color, just dab on certain areas. For example, I'm just gonna dab right here. See the shine that it's creating? Maybe here around the hair? Look at the highlight. It actually begins to look so, so darn realistic. Let's decrease the flow to about 20%, maybe around the hat a little bit, a little bit here and there, and it starts to look so darn good. Now, if you want to apply blend if to it, you're most welcome. So double click on the right hand side of the layer, take it away from the extremely dark areas. First of all, hold the Alt key or the Option key, click on the slider to break it apart to create a smooth transition. And this is how you do it. And it's all done. Now, after we are done, I would highly recommend that you go ahead, take a break and get back to it. Now, once I got back to it after a little break, I feel that there should be a little more contrast in the sunlight areas. So let's go down here to the contrast layer right there and just take it a little more down. Make it a little more bright like this. And there should be a little more impact is what I felt. Maybe let's make it a little more brighter like this. If you want to create more highlight areas, we can always add one more curves adjustment layer, limit it again, just to these areas, brighten it, make it super bright, and then select the mask, press Ctrl or Command I, take the brush white as the foreground color, and just dab once right there. Make sure the flow is at 100, and just dab once. There you have a little more highlight at your disposal. Decrease the opacity, of course, slowly and gradually increase it to a point where you like it, I'm going to keep it at about 42. So now it finally looks like something. What I love about it the most is the shadows. Just look at it. Look how much realistic it looks. Now, if you have more time, you can take the time to be precise with the sun rays. I just quickly did it with the lasso too. Remember, the more time you give it, the more realistic your results would be. So this is our final result. Thank you so much for watching this video. Let's do a quick little recap. First of all, make a selection of the sun rays, darken the other areas, brighten the sun ray areas, Maybe add a little contrast, maybe add a little impact by creating one more curves adjustment layer and just dab. Don't forget to add reds around the edges and keep in mind, don't forget it. When sun is falling on the eyes, it lights up differently. So you might want to use some other sample to just replace the iris. Once you have done that, you can do some finishing touches with a lot of things. Maybe add a simple color lookup table or in this example, just like we did, we added a curves adjustment layer and just highlighted certain areas where we felt the sunlight would just reflect on. So that's all for this tutorial. I hope this video helped. And if it did, make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you, my friend, don't miss any other future tips, tricks or tutorials. I would love to take this moment to thank all these nice and amazing people for supporting Piximperfect on Patreon and helping keep Pix Imperfect free for everybody forever. Thank you so much for your support. Thank you for watching again. I'll see you in my next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.